John chapter 4 verse 10. Look at what Jesus told the woman at the well in John chapter 4 verse number 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink. Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he will have given thee living water. Jesus emphatically revealed to her that he is the gift of God. He is the one who gives living water. He doesn't show you how to get it. He doesn't point you to salvation. He is the water. He is salvation. He is the way. So when he comes into your heart, all of that reality takes up residence on your inside. Remember, the meaning of the word, the word, a set of facts, a conclusion, a cause, a reason. We want to know where John developed the concept of calling Jesus the word. John 10, 34. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? I said, you are God's 35 to 36. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God. What caused the issue? What caused all this quarrel? He was speaking from John 10, 28. Let's look at it. The pretext. John 10, 28 and 29. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hands. 29. My father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hands. I give unto them eternal life. He didn't say, I preach eternal life. Or, he didn't say, I preach unto them eternal life. He said, I give unto them eternal life. Notice verse 28, he says, my hand. No one can take them out of my hand. No one can take them out of my father's hands. Do we have two hands? No. Verse 30 now explains what he means by my hand, my father's hand. I and Father are one. I and Father are one. So which means my hand is the Father's hand. The Father's hand is my hand. Alright? Are you following? Alright, so now. I and Father are one. Then they took stones to stone him. Verse 31. Look at what Jesus will now say to them in response to their stone. Then the Jews took up stones again. They like stones in Israel. They don't like stoning somebody. Took up stones again to stone him. Verse 32. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of these works do you stone me? 33. The, the Jews answered him saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou... Being a man, makest thyself God. Verse 34. <clears throat> Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, You are gods? I said, You are gods? What is he saying here? He's quoting from Psalm 82 verse 6. So let's go to the original place where he quoted from. Psalm 82 verse 6. I have said you are gods. And all of you are children of the most high. Mm. Jesus never said I am God. Did you observe? He never said that. Okay, But he said I and my father... Are one. I and my father are one. Not I am God. Then he explains further much later. Look at verse 38. 38 of John chapter 10. <clears throat> John 10 38. But if I do, though you believe not me, believe the works. He tells them to believe the works that you may know and believe that the father is in me and I in him. Now come back to verse 36 of the same chapter. John chapter 10, 36. Say ye of him 
whom the father has sanctified and sent into the world thou blasphemous because i said i am the son of god the word gods g-o-d-s whom the word gods gods in plural the word unto whom the word of god came gods it was used after that incidence there in four places and none of those was divine we can quickly look at them acts 14 11 acts chapter 14 verse 11 and when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices saying in the speech of Lyconia, the gods are come down to us. Look at it, plural. The gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. Acts 19.26. Acts 19.26. Moreover, you see and hear that most alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul had persuaded and turned away much people saying that there be no gods, plural, which are made with hands. First Corinthians chapter 8 verse 5 and 6. First Corinthians 8 verse 5 and 6. For though there be that are called gods, plural, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many. So take note of the word gods there. Gods there is in plural. Now please watch this. Watch this. Gods are never used for believers. The word gods there is the word idols. The word gods there is the word idols. I-D-O-L-S. So both in Acts and in the epistles, the word gods referred to idols. Let's examine the text again. Psalm 82 verse 6. <clears throat> Psalm 82 verse number 6. I have said you are God's plural. And all of you are children of the most high. Go back to verse 1 now. Let's get in details. Verse 1. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. Plural. He judgeth among the gods. The word gods there is the same word for Elohim. In Hebrew, is the same word for God. Okay? Now, so God, singular, judgeth among the gods, plural. Verse 2. Psalm 82, 2. How long will you judge, underline judge, unjustly, and accept the presence of the wicked seller. Verse 3. Instructions. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Verse 4. Deliver the poor and needy. Read them out of the hand of the wicked. Instructions. Verse 5. They know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6. I have said... Ye gods, ye gods, the eye is not in the original. Ye gods, and all of you children of the most high. So God is judging among the gods. These gods were not believers, these were judges in Israel. God was judging the judges. That's why I say you judges are supposed to defend the poor and the fatherless and the widows so god is judging judges these are not believers these are judges okay so that word gods is never used for believers nobody just say you know we are god keep quiet don't display your ignorance in public you need to study don't just speak something because a man of god is saying it you need to check the book and be sure that that is your true reality so you don't keep saying things that contradict who you are. Did you observe that the use of the word gods in the New Testament was just for, for, for idols? For idols or for people that you hold in high esteem in the society. He judged among the mighty. Why do you accept the presence of the unjust? The word Elohim in the Old Testament and New Testament also refers to idols. 
So Elohim is not just exclusively for God. So in the Old Testament, you can see an Elohim killed him. It may be an idol that killed him. Because God never kills. So when you now read, and God killed him, not knowing that the Elohim there refers to an idol or the oppression of a demonic entity tied to an idol, you now assume because it's God, it must be God. So there's no omnibus application for any word of scripture. Every word of scripture must be interpreted within, within its own merit, within the context where it is found. But, but you must remember that the word God is the word Elohim, which could be God, divine, or it can relate to idols or judges. Judges in the court of law. You know, today you, you call judges in the court of, of law, my Lord my lord even today they are called my lord are we in the building here my lord now if you say my lord people will think you're talking of jesus christ except you explain to them that it was a high court judge you met and you were referring to him as my lord so if you're writing a document today and you say my lord slapped him they will think it's God or Jesus, except somebody interprets that in our day today, judges are called my Lord. Are we teaching good? So the same use of language spans all through the, you know, through the, 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 the centuries, all through time. And that is why it is not heavenly language that the Bible is written with. It's written with human language. The language of the day-to-day -day communication within a particular time and season. So to understand what they were saying, you must sit where they sat and hear what they heard to understand what they were hearing. And in order for you to sit where they sat, you must read what they read. That's why we read what Jesus was reading in Psalm 82. And after analyzing, we now saw where they got the use of the word, you are God's. It wasn't referring to believers. Are we clear on this? Now, in Jesus statement when he said if he called them gods if he called them gods that same John 10 25 put it up for me John chapter 10 verse 25 John 10 sorry 35 John 10 35 mm -mm. John chapter 10 35 if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scriptures cannot be broken now let me ask you a simple question when he says, if he called them gods, was it in reference to himself? Was he referring to himself, Jesus, when he said, if he called them gods? Is Jesus among the them? Okay, good. Was it in reference to the church? No. So when he said, you gods, children of the most high, which is the same word used for supernatural beings that are worshipped. If he calls them, making reference to them, men of Israel, who were in position of worship. If he called them judges, it's just like saying, if we call them lords in today's world, if he called them gods, lords, it's getting clear. Then he now said, if you call them gods, how much more I who came from God? If you call human beings that you worship gods, how much more I that came from God? Why should it be an issue that I that came from God say I and my father are one? Since you yourselves didn't see anything wrong in calling people that you hold in respect God. Is it clear? That's exactly what Jesus was doing in that, in that context there. He was demystifying that whole reality to shut them up. Now, 